Would you only listen to those voices hissing around the whole hustle? America is tired of the Ukraine's agenda. The war and the expenditures are gigantic and growing. Good afternoon. This is Henry Keen on UATV English, bringing the hard truth in easy terms for the whole free world directly from Ukraine. On September 30th, the U.S. House of the Representatives, in order to avoid a shutdown, adopted a temporary budget in which, however, aid to Ukraine was not included. Indeed, the aid was not included. And let me explain this hard truth in easy terms for you. The aid for Ukraine was not included in a, I stress out, temporary budget of the United States because this is a temporary budget. While the support of Ukraine from the President's Biden administration, Congress and the American people remains unwavering and not temporary at all, but constant. As a matter of the fact, the US President called on Congress to approve aid to Ukraine as soon as possible. Mr. President, what are your words to U.S. allies and in particular Zelensky on continued funding for Ukraine? How can you reassure them? I can reassure them. Look at me. We're going to get it done. I can't believe those who voted for supporting Ukraine, overwhelming majority in the House and Senate, Democrat and Republican, will, for pure political reasons, let more people die needlessly in Ukraine. The bare facts of articles on aid on Ukraine not to be included in the temporary budget related to nothing else but procedural nuances and does not by any means mean a refusal of further support of the United States. The United States is with Ukraine because Ukraine fights for human rights against a brutal aggressor, Putin's Russia, that is waving a nuclear club and is ready to burn the whole place down so only for its usurped Tsar to stay in power. You probably heard all these talks about the U.S. spending too much in Ukraine. Well, let us talk figures, guys. The United States of America spends, or better said, invests as much as $850 billion into its military every year. So far, it reinvests barely 5% of that as military aid for Ukraine. Yes, it is an investment. One of the best investments the U.S. ever made so far, and here is why. The economy of the United States generates enough income to cover even tenfold amount, and these 5% is more than acceptable amount so as to get rid of one of the, its main adversaries of all time, Soviet Russia, without even settling one American soldier's food onto Ukrainian soil. As so, the whole hassle with the interim budget will not affect the aid approved for Ukraine earlier, almost $1.6 billion for defense needs and $1.23 billion in direct budget support, as well as funds for humanitarian and energy products. Negotiations are already in progress on the development of a new budget where aid to Ukraine will be stated clearly. Moreover, the budget can be adopted as a separate law or as part of an even larger package of financing of the Ministry of Defense. So if you really want to look at all things and see the truth, and not just the truth you want to see, well, then here it is. The U.S. was, is and will be standing with Ukraine in its righteous fight against the inhumane dictatorship of Putin's Russia, simply because it's by all means clearly worth it. On Saturday, EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy Josep Borrell visited Ukraine. In particular, he visited Kyiv, the center of strategic communications, where he got acquainted with the institution's activities and current threats within the mass media realm. It's not that Mr. Borrell was never bad about such threats before. It's just that they change constantly, and it is by all means worth monitoring constantly as well. No matter how and who likes it or not, European integration is strategic course of Ukraine's enshrined in our constitution. And our constitution is not a thing that can be, as it is the case for Russia, amended for the sake of any dictator gone mad. And the visit of the head of the European diplomacy shows that clearly, as well as the high priority of the relationship between Ukraine and the EU. Josep Borrell emphasized the fact Russian criminal aggression against Ukraine is an existential threat to Europe. It's about uh, the stability and predictability of the world, because this war is having deep consequences for the whole world. But for us Europeans, it's an existential threat. Maybe it's not being seen like this for everybody around the world, 
but for us, Europeans, allow me to repeat it, it's an existential threat. And that's why we have to continue supporting them and discussing with our American allies and friends for them to continue supporting them. The European Union is getting ready to announce long-term security obligations for Ukraine because it clearly understands the need of our country to increase its capabilities as soon as possible. The EU will continue to increase financial and military support to Ukraine no matter what. As so, the EU defines as a high priority the fight against Russian propaganda, manipulation and disinformation campaigns, cyber attacks and other hybrid influences of the Russian Federation against Ukraine and European countries. The head of the European diplomacy called for the creation of new structures similar to that center of strategic communications and support for existing ones. And that, as usual, refuted Russia's usual lies exploiting the fake paradigm of Europe's non-involvement in Kremlin's criminal invasion of Ukraine, the annexation of Ukrainian territories, all these atrocities, all the energy or food crisis, etc., etc., all those dirty deeds that Russia will inevitably will be held accountable for. And that, dear world, is what pisses comrade Putin the most, I believe. Whatever he does, the world just hates him more and more. Well... I personally just love the trend. Three more fully loaded vessels left the ports of Black Sea, Pivdeni and Chernomorsk on Sunday. Five more arrived at the ports of Odessa to be loaded. This is the new Grain Corridor and how it works these days. Ukraine managed to restore the operation of the Black Sea ports despite the attempts of the Russian blockade. The intensity of the sea cargo transportation reached the figures of September-October 2022 when the Grain Initiative functioned while having Russia in it. Now, without Russia in it, Ukraine is clearly demonstrating its ability to ensure exports. The hard truth, in easy terms, is Russia's participation in the deal was nothing but a hindrance. Since the Russians did their usual Russian business, for example, sabotage by delaying vessel inspections. As we all can clearly observe these days, Russia continues its attempts to block the Black Sea ports of Ukraine by systematic missiles and drone attacks. If that is not a terrorism, then find an easy term for it on your own. I couldn't. As a result of these attacks, not only Ukrainian ports and the marine vessels suffer, Russia is actively and constantly jamming the GPS communications of ships on Romanian territorial waters, which causes the risk of collisions. Romania and NATO must prepare for a long-term confrontation with the regime of Russian Federation, said the Army Chief of Staff General Daniel Petrescu. War has returned to Europe. It is a war chosen by Russia, which for Ukraine is a war of national survival and a fight for Western values. We do not see the end of this war now. And while we admire the resilience of Ukrainian society in the face of Russian attacks, we must also prepare for a long-term confrontation with the regime of the Russian Federation. Daniel Petrescu, the chief of defense staff of Romanian Armed Force at the Euro-Atlantic Resilience Forum. If that is not yet obvious to anyone... The war of the Russian Federation in Ukraine fundamentally destabilized the Black Sea region and caused insecurity among the right-pairing countries with repercussions on the security environment, said Daniel Petrescu. That's why the operation of the Grain Corridor requires investment in the security of international partners of Ukraine. Until it is simply not too late. It was Henry Keane on UATV English hoping to give you the hard truth in easy enough terms on our daily wrap-up today. Comment, like and subscribe. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Your opinion matters a lot to us. Stay safe and tune for more tomorrow. See you soon.